Hi everyone, today I'm putting release 5 of my VP Studio virtual production template up on my GitHub and this video is going to show you some of the new features and changes since the last release. First thing you'll probably notice is the project has a lot more folders and fewer things in the root folder so it's a little bit easier to find stuff. Also over here in the world outliner there's a lot more folders and a little better organization as well. One of the first things I did in this version is add foreground passes as you can see here, these allow you to have CG objects appear in front of your talent as well as the background objects that appear behind them. Now we're in the test and telemetry folder and this is where all the actors are that implement the telemetry and testing system that I put together. Uh, you'll see there's a motion stats which allows you to get statistics on all of your trackers over a little bit of time like say 20 or 30 seconds and you can use this to tell if your tracking setup has changed or if you're getting decent data out of it. Uh, maybe you've just rearranged the way your uh, base stations are set up and you want to see if there's any difference, you can use this for that. There's also a single telemetry sender that can send telemetry to an external program. Basically, it'll get all of the tracking data from one tracker. You can also connect this to something that's not a tracker if you want data off of some other object that's moving in your world. And then multiple tracker telemetry can send as many trackers as you have to this external program all at once. These are kind of involved to set up and everything. I've got some sample maps of, that demonstrate how they work, but there'll be another tutorial along shortly that explains these in more detail and gives you some demos. Here in the models folder, there are a few other new things. Originally, we just had one mat for the green screen called flat green screen, which looked a bit like this one down here in the corner. Uh, it turned out that's a, that was kind of hard to align and a bit tedious, and it wasn't very flexible. So what this system has now is separate flat mats for each part of your green screen. Uh, this can be really nice if you, say, don't have a floor uh, green screen, or you ha want to mat out part of, say, a desktop that would otherwise be invisible. You can come up here and take any of these mats and position them and size them any place in the world. So uh, the typical setup, if you had a uh, flat green screen before, would be to use the mat wall and the mat floor. To make these easier to use and stop all that tedious messing about with uh, the various components, I've now got various kinds of size adjustments right down here inside of each object. You can see in matte wall, you can set the width and the height. In matte desk, you can also set the width and the height. It's the same uh, for matte floor. So now you can just position the mat with the location and rotation if you need it. And then you can resize the mat. All the mats are now set up so that the uh, left corner is their origin. So you can just set that up to line up with whatever object in the real world you're trying to mat. And then you can adjust the size until it's correct. The way you set up the mats to be used is pretty simple. You just drag them from the models folder here into the level. They'll appear somewhere in the world outliner. And then you right click and say attach to. And you'll want to attach them to the talent mark. It's grayed out here because I've already done it. Then you'll get your location and rotation and size correct, or at least approximately right. You can adjust it later, and you're done. To activate the different mats so that they actually do something, you just need to add them to a layer. So if you go to the Layers window, you'll see the layer named Garbage Mat. All you have to do is select your mats, in this case these two, Go over and select Garbage Mat, right-click, and say Add Selected Actors to Selected Layer. And that automatically puts them in the Garbage Mat layer, which will be handled in Composure. It's already set up to do that. The other new thing in here is the Laser Pointer. Uh, there was a laser object before that had a built-in tracker and things, but that didn't work terribly well because it didn't have uh, an ability to delay the tracking. So it would come unstuck when you move the trackers around. The new laser pointer object you can connect to any tracker object. You just drop it on them and it'll draw a laser line, either a fixed length line or one that is very long and will stop whenever it hits an object. And I'll show you what the, the setup looks like right here. You can drop it directly, as you see here, on a Vive controller. And then you set the location to all zeros. 
You have the option to have it detect things and stop when it hits them or not by checking this box. Uh, if you want it to print the actor that it hits, you can check this box and it'll be printed on the screen. And you can set the length of the laser beam. Here it's set to 50 centimeters. I'll have a demo of this a little later in the video. The last area where there's some new stuff is in the measuring guides folder. Now one of the things in here is the measuring gadget, which is actually a way to measure your camera rig with a second tracker. That's a little bit involved and I'm going to have a completely separate tutorial up soon for that. The measuring gadget works together with the auto rig object, and I'll show you what that looks like. The auto rig is just a, a new type of generic rig that you can use to connect your camera up to a tracker. Uh, so you don't have to actually build a rig from scratch anymore if you don't want to. What the auto rig has is offsets for pan, tilt, vertical, horizontal, and the entrance people already built into it that you can set. The first group labeled measured is based on whatever measurements you took, either using the measurement gadget or using a ruler. The group called adjust basically allow you to add small changes to any of those above things. And uh, so what you want to do is get your measurements right, put them in the measured section, and then leave them alone. And then if you find that your rig is slightly out of alignment because it's been bumped or something else has changed, you can make very small adjustments by tweaking these guys. The measuring grid actor here is a new kind of smart alignment guide. What it lets you do is project a grid into your virtual world that you can try to match up with a similar grid in the real world. You can set the size of the squares and how many of them horizontally and vertically there are. So all you need is something like, say, a checkerboard, or you can go out and get a cutting mat from a hobby store that has a grid on it and put it out in your real world. This can be sitting on the floor, taped to the wall, just about any place that's convenient. You'll want to locate the measuring grid somewhere in your CG world, so it's at exactly the same spot where it would be in the real world. The easiest way to do this is to attach it to a tracker. You can also line them up using a tape measure, measuring from some known reference point, like say, the location of a tracker on your camera. You can see the measuring grid here, it's this grid of red lines, and you can set the grid size the number of x squares and the number of y squares over here in the measuring grid object itself. Here I have it connected to VivePuck3. So you'll see if I change the number of x squares, it just automatically resizes itself. Now we'll jump into the studio and I'll give you a quick demonstration of the laser pointer and the measuring grid and how they're used. Sorry, but there were a few minor problems with tracking, so you will see some glitches in this part of the video. Since this is just a quick demo, I didn't think it was that important to make it look absolutely perfect like when I'm shooting in virtual production for real. So you may notice some inconsistencies in the key and some occasional jumping of the trackers. All right, so I'm gonna show you uh, two of the new features that I talked about. Uh, one is this nice red grid that you can see right here. Uh, that's the uh, measuring grid that's new. And the other one uh, is the uh, way the trackers and the laser pointers are set up that you can see on those two trackers in front of me there. Uh, so the first thing is the, the measuring grid. And the idea with this is to give you a reference that you can use to line up the real world and the virtual world and make sure that they're, they're both correctly in line. And the way this works is uh, this black mat on my desk is just a standard old cutting mat that you can buy for fairly cheap uh, off Amazon or in most hobby stores, any place. Uh, and this one is ruled in one inch squares, as you can see. And I've set the measuring grid to also be the same number of one inch squares. So right now you can see that the view of the grid in the camera and the view of the measuring grid that's being drawn on top of it are pretty close to the same. Uh, I'm not trying to get absolute perfection for this shot here because it's just a demonstration, but you can get even closer than it looks here. You can see that it's just not exactly perfectly the same width, but it's very close. And I don't know whether you could even get much closer than this with an uncalibrated lens, uh, which I haven't done yet. I haven't removed the distortion from my lens. But the trick here is basically that this tracker is what's controlling where the grid gets drawn, and I positioned it right over the corner uh, of my cutting mat. 
Now you'll see how this tracker works if I move it. The whole grid follows along. Now the easiest way to make sure that the grid in the virtual world and this grid on the desktop are properly aligned is to put this tracker right here on the origin of the of the grid on the cutting mat. Uh, but actually that's a little harder than you'd think because these things are quite sensitive and even a fraction of a degree can throw it off. So what I'm planning on doing is getting some quarter inch uh, plastic rod which will fit into these two holes on the bottom of the tracker and just gluing them to the right spots on this mat so that I can set the tracker down and always have it be aligned correctly the very first time. So it's not going to get you 100% the there, but it'll at least give you a test pattern that you can use to get pretty darn close, as you can see. Uh, and one of the things that you might notice is these two guys. What you're seeing here is actually a virtual version of the controller drawn on top of the real one. And except for the times when it glitches, which I'm having a bit of trouble with my tracking setup lately, they, uh, they're pretty well registered. You can't really see the real tracker underneath the virtual one. So that's pretty good. And you've also got uh, these nice little laser pointers coming out of the end, which uh, right now they're set to be a fixed length and they don't collide with things. So you can sort of do your whole uh, lightsaber routine with them if you like. The other way they can operate is you can tell them that they have a much longer length, but they'll stop when they hit something. And they also keep track of what it is that they hit. So if uh, you want to, you can patch in some code to do something with that information, like select an object or cause it to do something when you pull the trigger, anything like that. And that's what's new in release five of uh, VP Studio. There'll be some new tutorials coming up shortly on how to use telemetry tracking and the measuring gadget. I'm also trying to come up with a tutorial that shows a little better how to align your sets with your virtual world, whether you're using trackers or whether you're just using a tape measure. Thanks for watching.